Hi, I'm Jason Bellamy, coming to you from National Harbor in Next 2015, where I'm joined by Gadalon, who just completed the 20th Maley Lecture. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Your lecture is about functional electrical stimulation. Uh, you clarified that you want it to become part of the standard of practice, but you also said it isn't for every instance. So first of all, uh, what are good opportunities for FES, and, and, and what are the, um, the minimum requirements for it? The, uh, yeah, the, the, the opportunities are tremendous. Uh, but it depends on a number of issues or barriers that we must overcome. Mm -hmm. And in the lecture, I was highlighting a number of those issues, including uh, the barrier that uh, we do not have the appropriate training mm -hmm. of physical therapists and physicians uh, in that whole area that we call in general electrical stimulation. Uh, another barrier was that while we're getting more and more high-tech type of wearable self-administered FES system, the system that we have today are still limited and they are very costly to the majority of patients to benefit from them. So if we were able to overcome that barrier, and that's what I was challenging, I was challenging the APTA members and industry to work together as partners and not as adversaries uh, to bring to the market new uh, wearable wireless FES system, then millions of patients worldwide will be able to benefit not just in the area of neural rehabilitation, but also in the area of musculoskeletal rehabilitation. Uh, as I mentioned, also there is an area of peripheral vascular disease that today nobody seem to offer FES to those kind of patients. Uh, so uh, the, the market will be quadruple I mentioned in the lecture, if we only add 10% mm -hmm. of the patient to benefit from FES. So during your lecture, you had some really powerful videos that showed basically this is the patient not performing well without FES. This is the patient, uh, you know, even for a non-PT to be able to instantly see performing much better uh, with FES. So um, if, if the technology improves, though, when you go to apply that, when you go to apply FES to the to program, you talked about changing the model of practice to really a more personalized approach. Tell me what you mean by that. Yes, uh, that was another major barrier that the what I uh, termed the classical or the legacy approach of statistically significant and clinically meaningful, uh, uh, it's the, the model that basically drive the clinical decision making at this point. And I was challenging to change that model uh, because the reality is but because of the restriction of that particular legacy model, most patients never even have a chance of experience FES. And, uh, the, and, and, and I came, I, I um, discussed the major barrier why most pa people will not be able to benefit from FES because of that barrier. And that's why we must change the practice model into a personalized model, which is the model that medicine is already following anyway, mm -hmm. right? Personal medicine. Uh, uh, while in, in medical arena, uh, they still do the experimentation uh, whether how to uh, create a personalized medicine like uh, uh, matching the DNA or matching the, uh, the bacteria and so forth. In physical therapy, we don't have to wait. Mm -hmm. We could start it today. Mm -hmm. We just need to change the model of how we evaluate and the evaluation and then the treatment plan is based on the individual patient and not based on the literature that say statistically significant versus clinically significant. That's a major barrier and that, that may create some discussion among our colleagues uh, whether this kind of approach is the way to go or not. Obviously, I believe it is the way to go. Great. Well, it's a stimulating lecture, as you can tell, uh, and these are the lectures that you can only catch at Next. For more updates from Next, you go to the Next website. I'm Jason Bellamy, and I'll catch you later.